Hello everyone and welcome to our very first cruise review here at Globe Guides. We've recently been in the Caribbean and we've been on the second largest ship in the world, the Allure of the Seas. So, Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas, the second largest cruise ship in the world, and we're here in Fort Lauderdale, about to embark on a one-week cruise around the Eastern Caribbean. Now, I say it's the second largest cruise ship in the world. It is, in actual fact, only a foot smaller in length than its sister ship, the Harmony of the Seas, that was launched in summer 2016. So, Fort Lauderdale, the process of checking in was really easy, thanks in part to the fact that we're platinum members on the Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society Club. So that was really easy, and here we are, about to get on the ship. You board on deck 5, which means as soon as you're inside, you're on the promenade. Now this is a feature on many of Royal Caribbean ships, but it's especially impressive on the Oasis class. Something that's quite unique to the Oasis class of ships is that you can actually opt for a balcony stateroom on the inside of the ship. This is what we decided to do on this particular cruise. So here we are on deck 12, let's take a look inside. So on first impressions, it's very much like what you'd expect on a outside balcony stateroom. As you enter the room, you've got the sitting area with the couch and the dressing table and also the flat screen TV. We've also got the double bed here as well. This is the way it looked when we actually boarded the ship and it's not perhaps as well made as what we'd normally expect on, on cruise lines that we've been on in the past. And then you've got the balcony there as well. And we'll have a look on the balcony in just a few moments. Now, one thing we do look for, believe it or not, in a stateroom is the amount of storage space you have. And on Royal Caribbean, it's pretty much standard. You've got the wardrobe here with some shelving and also some drawers on the dresser as well. Reasonable storage as well in the bathroom. It's well equipped. And one thing that I like about this particular bathroom as well over some of the other Royal Caribbean ships is that the shower is actually a cubicle, it's actually got cubicle doors and not a shower curtain as what you do sometimes have on other cruise lines. I promised to show you the balcony and here it is. It's really weird to start with, the fact that you can't see the ocean, but it's still a great view. Down there is Central Park, that's one of the areas of the ship that we'll be looking at very shortly. Quite a nice view and you've got restaurants down there and you've also got plants and trees that we'll look at very shortly. A great way to navigate your way around the ship are these electronic finders. It tells you what's going on around the ship and also the different areas and how to get there. On the Allure of the Seas and the other Oasis class ships, Royal Caribbean like to call the different areas of the vessel neighbourhoods. So let's take a look around some of those neighbourhoods. Starting off with the Royal Promenade. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that this is a feature of many of Royal Caribbean ships, but on the Oasis class it's especially impressive. In areas, as you can see there, it's actually over two decks. So let's take a look through the Royal Promenade. Promenade is one of my favourite parts of the ship. It's where you've got a lot of the bars and other public rooms. You've also got some places to eat as well. We'll come on to those a little bit later on. And you can also do some shopping down here as well. You've got some stores such as Michael Kors and other designer brands as well. Located on deck 6 at the rear of the ship is probably one of the more family orientated parts of the Allure of the Seas. It's called the Boardwalk and it's based on a traditional seaside resort such as Blackpool or Brighton here in the UK or Coney Island in the USA and it's inspired by the piers that you find in those resorts. So here for example you've got the carousel and they've got shops here for the children as well as some specialty dining options such as cantinas and uh, Johnny Rockets as well. 
And then at the end of the boardwalk, you've got the amphitheatre where you have some of the outdoor entertainment. Here's Central Park. Now we looked at Central Park a little bit earlier on in the video. Unsurprisingly, it's based on a um, urban park such as Central Park in New York. It's a really nice area of the ship, probably one of our favourite areas. It's quite tranquil and that's due in part to the fact that there's actually some sounds that have been piped into this area. It's sort of a typical kind of park sounds that you'd expect. Now here you've got um, real plants and real trees that Royal Caribbean have planted in this area of the ship. And on either side you've got speciality dining, so you've got Vintages which is a wine bar and you've got Park Cafe across the way which serves um, lunch and breakfast uh, such as salads and sandwiches. And you've also got a little bit further down Chops Grill and um, 150 Central Park which is fine dining. In an evening you also have a pianist uh, or a singer which uh, provides entertainment in Central Park which gives it a really nice atmosphere. Perhaps one of the most important parts of the ship, on sea days at least, is the pool deck here on deck 15. You'll find four different pools including the children's pool that you can see here and there's also several bars dotted around as well so you can have that all important cocktail. So this is a frozen mango juice drink, non-alcoholic. Of and, course. Well, it's daytime, so you know, pace myself. One of our favourite parts of Deck 15 is the solarium. It's a great place to come if perhaps the weather isn't as great outside or even if it's a little bit windy. There's plenty of hot tubs and jacuzzis here for you to chill out in and the great thing is it's adults only as well. Next up are the sports decks at the rear of decks 15 and 16 and they have two floor riders which are a feature on many Royal Caribbean ships and here's me and Ivan having a go at bodyboarding. Here's Ivan. Not a bad effort. And here's me, a bit of a pro I'd say. <laughs> Maybe not then. Also on the sports decks you'll find, unsurprisingly enough, a sports courts, uh, mini golf. And this, it's a zip line where you can go from one end of the ship right over the boardwalk to the other. So what about food and drink then? So we'll start with drink and something that's become very popular on many cruise lines in recent years is the drinks package. We got um, a free one with the cost of our cruise and then when we got on board the ship we actually upgraded using our stateroom credit to the premium package and what this allowed us to do was to have basically any drink up to the value of $12 which is most drinks to be fair so cocktails, beers, wines, soft drinks, waters, um, certain coffees as well. It's really well worth it. You don't have to worry about um, adding any further costs onto your cruise and to be honest we actually make money. Uh, we don't lose any money by booking a, a bevy package even if we do uh, pay for it outright. So it's well worth doing and it's something that we always do regardless of which cruise line we use. Of course food is a massive part of cruising and this on the lure of the seas is the main informal buffet restaurant. There's plenty to choose from uh, perhaps not as much as what you'd expect on some of the other Royal Caribbean ships and I think the reason why that is is because on the Oasis class ships there are other informal dining options for you to choose from as well but nevertheless there is still plenty of choice lots of cuisine from right around the world from Italian to Chinese to British so you certainly won't go hungry Located on deck 5 is Silk. Now this is one of the three main formal restaurants on the Allure of the Seas. And this is where you can come for breakfast, um, lunch on sea days and also for dinner. So Ivan, what you got? Roasted peach soup. Mm, what's it like? It's really nice, it's just cold. It's meant to be cold. Like a spatchel. Yeah, you know, so it's a kind of a... In my head it's a conflict, because soup should be hot, not cold. That's it. The Allure of the Sea still has the two traditional seating times for dinner, either at 6pm or 8.30pm. We always opt for the later seating, that just suits us better. But if you're more fluid in your dining arrangements, then the main restaurant also offers something called My Time Dining, which means you can make a reservation on the day. 
Now this is Sorrento, this is one of the um, restaurants which is included in the cruise fare. It serves pizza and then a little bit further up the promenade there on the right hand side you've got Park Cafe which does uh, coffees, um, cakes, pastries and also sandwiches. Another very popular option on board for casual dining is the Park Cafe up on Central Park. Becoming ever more popular on many cruise lines these days is speciality dining where you can pay a little bit extra cover charge uh, for you to dine in separate restaurants. Now this is uh, 150 Central Park where we ate, we ate on one of the nights, in fact it was Ivan's birthday. The service was a little bit slow in places but the food was fantastic and um, it cost about $40 in that particular restaurant. Alternatively, right at the other end of the scale, you've got Johnny Rockets here, where for $10 you can go and have a traditional American burger and fries. If there's one area that the Oasis class ships excel in, it's entertainment. This is the aqua theatre on the back of the ship, which is obviously a water theatre, and uh, this was a diving show that we saw on one of the nights, a daredevil diving show, which is amazing. This is Studio B, which in the daytime is an ice rink, in the evening it becomes a, a stage. This is actually Royal Caribbean's signature game show called Quest, it's always a must see on whatever cruise you go on, and of course then you've got the casino as well. This is the Amber Theatre, probably one of the biggest theatres at sea. Uh, some great productions right across the cruise, including Mamma Mia, which is probably one of the best shows we've ever seen on a cruise. Full two and a half hour show, it was fantastic. This is on air, this is the karaoke bar. This is one of Ivan's favourite bars because this is where he gets to sing. This is him here on karaoke. And then across from on air you've also got Boleros, which is like a dance bar. And you've also got the nightclub as well. There's plenty of bars for you to choose from on the Allure of the Seas. Just remember to go easy on those cocktails because this ship is huge. And at some point you've got to make your way back to your stateroom. So what do Globe guys think about the Allure of the Seas? Well she's certainly impressive and you can't fail to be impressed by the size of her when you first see the ship in port in Fort Lauderdale. On board there's an abundance of things to see and do but the question is, is she too big? Well for a one week itinerary Globe guys would probably say yes. It would be great if Royal Caribbean were to offer longer cruises other than back to backs on the Oasis class of ship. Broadly speaking though, for the size of the vessel, everything is very well organised and we receive the same good service that we've encountered on other smaller Royal ships. So as the sun sets on our first cruise review, remember to add us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube and stay tuned for our review of the Celebrity Millennium ship coming up later in the year. Thanks for watching.